Cristina, agora estamos na hora do debate. Os comandos são teus. É verdade, Filipe. E vamos ao debate, obviamente, sobre a égide ainda da presidência portuguesa na União Europeia. Ao fim e ao cabo, faltam pouco mais de dois meses, e dois meses é muito pouco tempo. E é uma presidência, um semestre um, cheio, repleto de desafios. Basta termos bem presente a crise que estamos a viver e também outras problemáticas que ainda se arrastam no seio da União Europeia, nomeadamente a questão do Brexit. Mas aqui falamos essencialmente de, de aviação. Já se aflorou um, por parte dos intervenientes neste Portugal Air Summit algumas das questões que esperam vir a ser abordadas, mas... Também neste painel, essa é uma linha de pensamento que vamos abordar, mas também outras questões, porque ao fim e ao cabo temos aqui intervenentes, não só da área aeroportuária, portanto dos aeroportos, da nave, da IATA, portanto temos aqui um, um, as pessoas essenciais, as personalidades essenciais para nos dar em conta exatamente do que esperam, dos desafios que esperam ver cumpridos e também das soluções que possam um, eventualmente vir a ser apresentadas, já que este é um contexto uh, que estamos a viver diferente, que não esperávamos, mas o que é certo é que os cientistas um, avisam que uh, estamos realmente face a enfrentar uma pandemia, mas poderão vir aí outras. E até que ponto é que este setor aguenta ou não uma outra pandemia? Pois bem, é isso que vamos saber. E agora passo a apresentar os meus convidados e devo dizer que esta, esta mesa vai, vai ser em inglês. Peço desculpa também, desde já, pelo meu inglês, porque há mais de um ano e meio que não falo em, 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 em inglês. Portanto, é natural que haja aqui algumas falhas, mas passo já a apresentar os meus, uh, os meus convidados. Good morning all and welcome to the Air Summit. Um, passo a apresentar Rafael Schwarzman, uh, que é o vice-presidente da IATA. Também Luís Ribeiro, presidente da ANAC, o general Manuel Teixeira Rolo, presidente da NAF Portugal e Thierry Ligonier, CEO da ANA Airport, Aeroportos. Um, I'm going to do the first question uh, for all of you and I'm going to begin with, with you, Mr. Rafael Schwarzman. Um, how can Portuguese presidents of EU um, help the um, aviation recover in Europe? Sorry, can you repeat the... How can the Portuguese oh, okay. presidents help the aviation? Okay. Well, I think, uh, uh, first, Cristina, thank you very much for, for having me here. It's really good. Uh, it's our pleasure. I think the, the great panel of colleagues here. Uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, it, this is a historical event. I mean, we have never seen a crisis like this um, in aviation. I referred to it in, in my message be before, not even in September 11, not the financial crisis. Yes. Uh, we have never seen something of, of this magnitude. So I would say uh, that Portugal is in a unique position because of this critical moment, and it can definitely help to uh, bring Europe together, if I can say. Why? Because we have not been able to mm -hmm. actually uh, uh, take measures in a harmonized way, in a consistent way to reestablish air transport in Europe. So we have seen a fragmented approach To this, uh, to this situation. We have seen uh, quarantines being imposed, yes. borders opening and closing. You never know exactly what the restrictions will be actually uh, yeah, when countries. you have to fly to a place. Uh, so I think uh, following the intentions that already started um, uh, these past few weeks, I think we already know during uh, the, the next uh, few months ahead, uh, we still will have immense challenges in terms of, again, driving a harmonized set of measures and, and uh, being able to reestablish one of the best connected regions in the world, right? And aviation is very, it's a safely driven business and it has proven to be safe, but we have not, we have, we have been, let's say, victims of this yes. uh, lack of um, uh, unified voice I would say, from the European governments. And I think that puts a lot of responsibility, if I can say, to the, to the Portuguese presidency. But this is history. So let's hope it, uh, you know, we, can, we can see some, some good progress during the, the Portuguese presidency. And let's work. <laughs> Luis Ribeiro, the same question for you. What do you expect? Well, well um, I, I think that, uh, that the aviation industry and, and the players have been quite successful in first uh, adapting to, to, this, uh, to this pandemic, then trying to, to figure out technical and safe, uh, safety responses to, to the crisis. 
and we had the, the political element, the, the, the uh, health element that is completely outside the scope of the, the aviation sector that presented some, some, some uh, challenges to, to, that, uh, to that recovery. Uh, it, it was already mentioned, the, the fragmented approach, the quarantines, the lack of uh, visibility when, when a passenger uh, buys a ticket, he normally does so about two, three months uh, ahead of the, the travel. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, in the current uh, state of affairs, that passenger will not know if he will be able to travel, what will be the, yeah. the procedure, the, the restrictions in, in, in force. We understand all of that because mainly this, this response has been uh, health uh, uh, driven, let's say, by the health authorities and they respond to the, to the immediate threats. I think that we now have the role uh, as, as presidency to, to, to take stock of the lessons learned and try to, to figure out what we will do in the future if such a situation arises again. And that's mainly what, what I think that will be the, the challenge, to look hopefully back on this, on this situation and, and, and try to, to figure out common rules regarding passenger rights in this kind of situation, mm -hmm. common rules regarding uh, health responses, how uh, health authorities and aviation authorities respond together. And there has been a lot of work uh, being done, but all in a sense of rush, having an immediate result mm -hmm. We need a common public. approach. We need a common and planned approach yes. for, for the next time. Is the general the same question? What do well, you expect? Uh, I think the, the, the sector of aviation has, has always demonstrated that it's very resilient and flexible. Now, that is true for a certain amount of time or a certain period of time. And that resilience will go on will go away uh, when, the, when the time increases. So the focus uh, has in fact to be around the time that the pandemic will, will stay. The companies will try to be resilient. The, all, the se all the aviation sector as a whole will try to be resilient, but it'll, it all depends. And you just mentioned it. If another pandemic will come, then we don't know for sure what, what will happen. So in the meantime, we have to find solutions for all. And I think of, of the previous answers, we, we already got some of the, of the ways that we have to, to deal with, with this. Now, in what concerns the, 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 na the, the national service providers for air deviation, that's in fact a, a very difficult problem because as, as, as you know, we depend very much on the, on the, on the companies, on the taxes that they pay. And if, if the traffic tends to go no. down, as, as is going now, and all the, all the forecasts are showing that it, it will continue for a while like this, then we will, we will continue in, in, the, in a very difficult situation in terms of financial support of, of the enterprise and of the companies. So this is the, the main concern right now. That's why we have to find a, a common agreement on how to deal with this, yes. again, related to the time that the pandemic will be present. So we have to find financial solutions for that. And we have to find ways to continue the mission because as I just mentioned, we cannot stop the mission. I recall that uh, when, when the pandemic uh, took place on the initial of March, the companies stopped their operation, most of them, but we had flights, uh, we had uh, humanitarian flights, uh, flights bringing citizens to their own countries, yes. medical flights. And so the mission in, Gaza, in, in the case of now Portugal, the mission continued. And we have to find, in fact, good solutions to keep the people working in the health conditions that uh, allow them to do that. And at the same time, keep the balance, the financial balance to keep. Uh, so this is, in fact, the great, the great compromise that we have to find for the near future. Yes, yes true. Thierry, uh, how can uh, Portuguese presidents help the, the sector? Yeah, well, um, we're all of us uh, actors of the, uh, of the uh, air transportation industry uh, in a race against time. We need, to, we need to recover and to recover as fast as possible. What's the main obstacle that we have today? Today, um, the main obstacle is no longer confidence in uh, the safety, the, uh, the health safety uh, while traveling from the passengers. Everybody is now 
comfortable with that. We have made studies. IATA has made studies that yep. demonstrates that people, tra travelers, passengers, trust that the in the measures that have been uh, implemented in, in the airlines and airports to guarantee their, their safety. Um, the obstacle is more uh, on the um, regulatory standpoint, I would say. The measures that have been taken by the countries in uh, a non-coordinated way yeah. uh, to ensure the health of their citizens. So we need, in, aviation is, uh, is an industry of, of planning. We need planning um, to rebuild our, uh, our activity. And um, to be able to have to plan, we need stability and we need clear rules. That's crucial to, uh, to us. So um, we need that there be a, a coordination between the countries uh, at the European level and beyond the yes. European level uh, with countries uh, outside, the, outside Europe. But we're, um, uh, because Portugal is, is very aware uh, of the importance of the aviation to, to its economy, uh, and is very aware too of the consequences of this lack of coordination that we have seen during the summer. Corridors uh, opening up, closing, and the consequences of that on, on uh, the tourism activity in, yes. in the Algarve or in, in, uh, uh, in the other regions of Portugal. Um, we feel very lucky at this time that Portugal will be uh, uh, assuming this uh, presidency of the uh, European Council uh, because we feel that things will be moving forward for uh, the whole aviation industry under the impulsion of, of Portugal. Hope so. <laughs> Mr. Raphael, um, many people um, have scared, are scared uh, of being aboard uh, board because of the new coronavirus. Uh, there is really a chance of getting COVID on a, in a flight. Very good question, Christina. Yes, I, 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 uh, I mean, I, I think all of us are extremely concerned, obviously, of getting infected everywhere, right? Because you see, we are moving here. Everything has to be treated in a special way. We're all wearing masks. Yes. So um, it is understandable uh, that, that this fear is there. First of all, the industry, and it was mentioned just by one of my colleagues here, uh, the industry has proven historically to be very resilient. So one of the things this industry did in the beginning of the crisis is immediately adopted uh, a common biosecurity framework that was adopted very effectively and efficiently across Europe, right, and, and the world. But I would, yes. you know, I'm focusing on Europe, let's say. Um, that already has provided a very good framework Right, that we can actually, ha it has been proven that it, it, we can travel safely. And, and, and to that point, you know, up, up to today, more or less 1.2 billion people have traveled this year. Out of those 1.2 billion people, there are only 44 cases that are uh, proven to be onboard transmissions. Just 44. 44 cases. That is one case per 27 billion, million passengers, right? So obviously, uh, the, 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 the risk is very low. Obviously, another thing is what is the perception considering what's happening there, right? That, that we fully understand. On top of that, um, you know, of the measures I mentioned, the aircraft obviously have been already uh, extensive tests done. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, have, uh, we have, first of all, the aircraft are equipped with EPA filters, which filter 99.99% of all bacteria and viruses, yes. right? Air is changed. Um, as an example, I mean, air is changed on an aircraft an average about 30 times per hour compared to, let's say, this room, which probably doesn't get even to 10 times per hour. So we have more chances to actually get infected here than on an aircraft, right? Um, so uh, on top of that, obviously, we have the mask on, uh, uh, on board. We are uh, facing forward, for example, yes. so the seats are also a barrier, like the plastic uh, shields that we see up there. Uh, the air is circulated from ceiling to the ground. I mean, many of the things I know people are somewhat aware, but I think the measures that we have put in place, the actions we have taken to prohibit, if you would, flying by imposing quarantines and all that, yes. have created that fear, right? But uh, aviation has proven to be, today, still the safest mode of transport. I mean, there is no, you know, I already mentioned the 30 times per hour, I mean, there is nothing comparable in any other modes of transport that an air, you know, is filtered through in, a, in an aircraft. So 
again, the, 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 that's why we keep saying that the, the important thing here is common action, harmonized actions by um, the, the authorities uh, at this stage. And, and again, when I say the authorities, I have to be also saying we're dealing with a pandemic, right? So it's not necessarily um, the people who are sitting in this, in this uh, panel at this moment, yes. right? It is a much wider set of stakeholders that we need to align, and we know it's very difficult. But aviation is extremely safe. I can encourage everyone to, to actually travel. And for the safety, do you think um, testing is one of the solutions? Definitely, we, we, we do uh, uh, look forward to uh, have uh, testing as a, as, a, as a measure to test every passenger before flying uh, and, and obviously avoiding quarantine, right? And, and we, tend, uh, we, we do prefer uh, to go for antigen tests that are quick tests that can be done. Yep. Antigen tests are evolving quite positively. You know, the, 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 the whole science of it is being developed or evolving positively. So we do believe that testing is an alternative to um, avoiding this set of measures that are actually uh, not motivating people to travel. Yep. Luis Ribeiro, do you agree? Uh, testing is one of the solutions? Yes, uh, testing is one of the, the possible solutions and it, probably better than, than a, a strict uh, quarantine. Uh, there are some troubles uh, with, with, with the, the, the testing because you have to, to fine tune the, the moment where the test is done, what kind of tests. So, so yes. there, there's still a lot of uh, research that has to be, to be Many done. Dogs until this, this uh, begins to, to be an acceptable solution in terms of public health yes. authorities. Uh, and this is public health driven. So, so it is, it is a, a viable solution. It has to be uh, fine-tuned in terms of, of process. But again, in answering your, your, your first question, it is safe to fly. Uh, the airplane in itself is, is, is a, a, a safe, uh, safe environment, or at least as safe as it, it can be. But you also have to understand that uh, traveling is a whole process. So you get out from your, 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 your family bubble, and then you end up in, in your destination. You pass through uh, the streets, public transportation, yes. the airports, a lot of places. So you, one of the things that we need to do as, as, as uh, uh, civil aviation authorities is also to take care of the entire process and to assure that the entire process is uh, uh, as risk-free as we as we can mm -hmm. do, and that uh, that also includes the airports where, where we travel, the, the 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 lines for for passport control, all the the security measures that that uh, need to be in place because of uh, because of the, the, the security pandemic, concerns, uh, uh, and then we have the pandemic. So. So and affected the role of the um, regulator. Yes, yes, a and we have learned a lot. And we were, of course, not that prepared to, to deal with this pandemic as we were not prepared no after 9-11 to deal with yes. the security challenges. I, I will give you an example. We had uh, procedures around, uh, about passenger locator cards to identify possible contaminations aboard the flight. We had a procedure, an ICAO procedure, so internationally adopted, regarding passenger located cards. They were on paper. Uh, it was a cumbersome process. Uh, you had to fill in the, 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 the papers, pass them on to the crew, collect them, put them aside in the hope that no one would ever require, uh, require them. But if they did, they would go through all the papers, etc. When we started dealing with this pandemic, questions started arising, well, but if someone has the pandemic, it will uh, touch the paper, it yeah. will, will spread the disease to the, to the air crews, etc., etc. We have evolved since then to an, an electronic passenger locator card. It was something that we learned that we had to do. No we contact. were not prepared, but now we are planning and hopefully it will not arise. But if we have a new situation like this, we will be better prepared and we yes. can plan ahead to this kind of, uh, to this kind of emergency. It's important to do so. Yes, it's important to do so. And again, planning for us is, is very important and to reassure people that they will have a safe travel. Yeah, it's important. Uh, Mr. General, and um, how the pandemic affected the... the um, uh, the air navigation service providers in Europe? Well, as, as, I, as I mentioned before, it, it really impacted a lot. Yeah. Uh, first, for the, on the financial side, 
because, as, uh, as no I taxes. mentioned, <laughs> yes, uh, but but th that has that there has a strong impact, not only because we need we need of course th that financial uh, resources to take care of the, of the personnel, to take care of the, of, the, of the contingent of personnel that incorporates the company, but also uh, what is associated to the to the to all the investment that we have to do on the infrastructure on the systems uh, especially on future systems and and and, and so on so uh, the impact is mainly on the financial side now there's also a human factor on that of course because uh, as you went into a pandemic scenario uh, we notice that then people of course uh, they are a little bit afraid of what's going to happen what is the way that the company uh, is going to respond to, the, to this particular scenario? What are the measures that we are going to take in consideration to guarantee that they will be always on, 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 on health conditions and on, on good psycho psychological conditions to continue the mission? And so that's why we, as I mentioned, we incorporated a few contingency plans immediately after that. So we could provide what we thought it was needed for the mission to continue. Contingency plans on the, on the human side and on, on the personal side. Contingency plans on the financial side. Uh, we took a lot of measures in order to reduce the expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have uh, uh, extended in time some of the investments that were supposed to take uh, place in 2020. So we, 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 we took them uh, and we, we brought them to uh, two years after that so we can uh, have the let's say the, the financial comfort to deal with without those particular but again that has impact on the company especially on the on the, what was planned and also on what we think would be the need the side of technology to respond to the to the goals that we have as a company and to give a better service to provide a better service in terms of what the navigation is supposed to provide so then we have to establish priorities in what are the systems that we have to keep mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of investment and find the, uh, the correct solutions to have the money in place yes. to take them also in place for uh, the planning that we did and for the actions that we have to take in support. So, I mean, that's a mix of financial, human side, yes. and, and of course, uh, again, this all is related to a perception. I, I, I agree with, with, with the vice president of, of IATA. And I, 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 I mean, it's, 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 it must be very difficult for the companies. They know they are doing everything they can to get the passengers on board. Yes. Uh, and so it's a huge effort in terms of uh, what they have to do. But again, this is all in the perception of people. Yes. And I think only the vaccine will bring uh, that uh, a release to that perception. But until Actually, that's what your control is also testing and, and showing on their uh, forecasts. Uh, we don't see a, a fuel recovery until 2024. And meanwhile, we have to deal with that perception and, and, and just give comfort to the people that it's safe to fly. But all these consequences that we have just mentioned are in place. and when, until that perception is gone, I think it's going to take some time. And Thierry, it's safe to be in the uh, airport? Yeah, sure. It's absolutely safe to be in an airport. We have uh, taken all the necessary measures from the beginning. Uh, we now uh, have certifications, international certifications for health safety from, uh, from uh, different uh, recognized institutes. Um, and um, and so uh, I think it has been it has been recognized now by uh, by everybody. Everybody feels at ease uh, going through our airports. You you found uh, hydroalcoholic gel. People are wearing masks. Uh, you have uh, and uh, social physical distance. distancing. Yeah, exactly. That's that's an issue actually. That that puts on top of the table the uh, the question related to facilitation in our airport. So we can. We can feel that uh, as the traffic will be recovering, um, uh, we, we may have some, some challenges dealing with the increase of traffic and maintaining uh, physical distances between passengers. Absolutely. So yeah. we are working on that. That's something we, are, we have been thinking about since the beginning and not only us. AESA has been thinking about that also since the beginning. And the solution to that 
comes um, through two ways. First is to continue doing capacity increases. And uh, in Portugal, we have a, a project for capacity extension in, uh, in, the, re in the region of, of Lisbon. And this has to move forward uh, as soon as possible. We maintain our investment. We want to move forward with that because Montijo. it will be, yes, Montijo, it will be an, a necessary instrument for the rebound when it comes. We expect to find again the numbers of 2019, maybe in 2024. That's the, uh, the overall uh, um, uh, projection of the industry. Yeah. So we need to start building this new capacity and we need to start putting technology um, as, a, as a tool to, uh, to uh, improve facilitation in our airports. Um, that's the strong move that's, uh, that's going on uh, right now uh, in, the, uh, in our airports. And uh, we, we hope we'll have the, uh, the support of uh, our stakeholders into moving forward with those projects. And uh, it could be a very important the role of the airports on the recovery of the economy. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's hard times for everybody, and especially for, uh, for airports that have fixed cost uh, today. Uh, but we need to continue ensuring um, the public service and um, take initiatives to optimize the economics of the sector. At, and at the end of the day, we need to accompany the efforts that are being made everywhere um, to cope with the situation. What does that mean? That means reviewing our uh, investment plans and master planning to stick to the needs of our customers, of the airlines, uh, of the passengers uh, as much as we can. And that means to restructure also our incentives to, uh, uh, to redevelop traffic. Um, and um, we have anticipated, for example, in, uh, in Portugal, uh, these, uh, these efforts with a 70% rebate, for example, in our landing charges. So we hope this can be uh, a help for, for everybody to, to recover a little bit, to cope with the situation, to, to see uh, maybe um, uh, the future in a little bit more optimistic way to find ways to, to rebuild something um, and, to, um, and to continue preparing this, uh, this rebound when it, when it comes. So just to finalize our conversation, I'd like to, um, to make a question for all of you. Um, do you know the movement Build Back Better? No. Uh, they say after this pandemic, the society will be more resilient and greener. Do you agree? Well, that's, uh, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure the lessons that we will learn here will make us, uh, will, you know, aviation again, it's a, it's a fantastic industry in the sense that it has uh, uh, very strong um, uh, learning capabilities, let's say. So I'm sure that's going to be the case. I mean, the colleagues here as well, we have all gone through different crises. I mentioned September 11. Uh, examples like that, and, and I'm sure we, um, we are able to do that. Uh, in the case of Europe, I, I think there is a strong compromise to uh, build a, a greener industry. Now, in that sense, again, we, we need to have the right incentives in that area. I mean, focusing on the areas that we, I mean, uh, uh, being able to decarbonize aviation is one of the toughest industries in the world. I mean, you cannot there are no ways to fly, but today with electric aircrafts or, or those alternatives. So obviously we need in between that certain measures to be taken in place, uh, sustainable aviation fuel being the most urgent one as a, as a measure to be able to get to a point where we get electricity, electric aircrafts or hydrogen uh, power aircraft, right? Um, and, and so I would say the initiatives are there. I will be very cautious about the initiatives that will be uh, taxing or, or tax uh, uh, because that money is not going to be invested in the resources that are needed to actually be able to decarbonize the industry. And there are many good initiatives, and I know my colleagues have a few points on that as well, that the airlines and the airports and everybody in the value chain is taking in terms of, uh, you know, um, making this industry more sustainable, including obviously having, you know, very modern fleets like the case of, of TAP in, in Portugal, actually, right? Uh, maintaining a very modern fit, which in general, every, every airplane that is brought in is 15 to 17% more fuel efficient than the previous one they replaced. So that's, that, and, and that in a very highly 
capital intensive industry is, is very, very important. So if we, if we combine all that with what we're seeing today as a crisis, well, obviously we will need to have uh, a very common aligned effort to, to definitely decarbonize, and the, and the compromise is there. I mean, the industry is compromised to do this, has proven to do so, but we need to do it together. Has to do so. Yeah. Do you agree we are going to be more resilient and greener? Definitely more resilient, and uh, uh, as for the greener part, I, I think that requires a, 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 an, an extensive effort. Uh, we will not be more uh, greener because of the pandemic. We will be greener because we can take the time that this pandemic has given us to, to, to uh, research and to find ways to, to, to make aviation uh, uh, greener by the by uh, having uh, biofuels by having research on electrical planes that will still uh, come into service several years from now not not in the in the short time to have uh, to have uh, smarter ways of transportation and and uh, and one of the, the the early interventions by 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 i think the, the secretary of state was was mentioning the need for aviation to be a part of a, a transportation network a smart transportation network to stop hauling people by air for short distances and focusing on uh, uh, air transportation on what really makes it uh, 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 a difference that is long haul transportation or, or, or medium haul transportation. So all of that will make uh, 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 the society a bit greener. It's, it's not a virus that will make us, mm -hmm. uh, that will make us greener by itself. General, we well, are going to be more resilient? I, I I think I think it's we cannot we cannot look at this issue as as a, a, as, a way. as a matter of energy only. Mm -hmm. We have to think about a system that incorporates different variables. And what I mean by this is, of course, green fuels will be will be will be fine, and we have to uh, to develop uh, that kind of, of fuels, and that's what we are doing for now. Uh, studies with hydrogen and. Uh, and the biofuels and, uh, and other systems. But then we have to take a look at other variables. For example, let me give you an example. When we will incorporate the flow of traffic with artificial intelligence, for example, then we can probably optimize trajectories. We can optimize routes. And it means less fuel. It means uh, less impact on, on, on the environment side. And Again, the, 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 the air service providers have also a very special role of this. Just, I just mentioned an example of the free routes. So if, if, if for, for a certain uh, portion of the route, if that particular air uh, traffic system can expedite and can uh, make a direct route in terms of what the, the pilot is requesting, then again, mm -hmm. they are uh, making that they will expend less fuel, it will be more quick, and the direct route for, for the waypoint that he wants to navigate. So I think that's all the kind of variables that we have to look at. And, and if you are able to uh, get a better mm -hmm. solutions on all of those variables, I think at the end we'll have uh, what we call the green aviation on, on, a, better, on a better shape. And uh, if not in 2050, I hope at least uh, in 2060 <laughs> that will be possible. But we, we tend to go to the, on that way, of course. I think. Thierry? Well, we just, it's, it's funny because we just had two weeks ago a, a worldwide event with our network of airports, advanced airports around, around the world related to environment. And um, it was amazing the initiatives that are taken by the, uh, the airports actually in fields like biodiversity, waste management, uh, circular economy, uh, decarbonization, and, and all, the, all, the, all that um, at different, different places of the world, which means that basically this issue of environment is not new. Uh, it's on top of the agenda of the airport infrastructures uh, already for, for some time. So, and we're seeing actual results now uh, most of our airports have reached level two uh, certification or level three certification uh, uh, for decarbonization. We have very uh, ambitious and strong objectives to be reached regarding decarbonization 
uh, in the group, but it's the airport industry as a whole that have subscribed these, uh, uh, these commitments. And um, so it's not related to the pandemics. Uh, we know, we know, we are aware, all of the industry, all, all of the members of this uh, air transportation industry, the airlines, the uh, handlers, the, uh, the airports, uh, that uh, environment and good behavior uh, in environment is our license to operate. So we're taking this very seriously and probably uh, the air transportation sector is the one that has made the, the uh, among the one that has made the strongest effort uh, actually to reduce its impact, uh, to find new technological solution. It was already mentioned by, by Rafael, uh, what the, uh, the constructor uh, of, uh, of aircraft, uh, the aircraft manufacturers are doing, uh, Boeing, Airbus, the, uh, the uh, uh, hydrogen um, uh, uh, powered aircraft, which is, uh, expected to come in 2035. So everybody's aligned to, to move, to move uh, uh, forward towards this goal to be, uh, to be a cleaner industry. But uh, on the whole, I think we have made significant progresses in, in, the, last, in the last years and, and the movement is just moving, is just continuing. So it's, it, this is, a, I think, a positive uh, uh, note for, uh, uh, for people to know. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, it was a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much. Thank you.